Bowling Green City Commissioner Brian Slim Nash did violate the city's ethics policies, but did not use or attempt to use his official position to secure special privileges during a recent arrest. Those are the findings of a special counsel's report after two dozen ethics complaints were filed against the elected leader. The report, written by Paducah attorney Stacey Blankenship, was made public Thursday morning, several hours after she filed the document with the Bowling Green Board of Ethics. The report includes a number of witness statements, photos, and video. According to the report, Nash admitted that he failed to maintain his conduct to the highest standards and engaged in conduct that was a violation of state law. The report also mentions that Nash did not identify himself as a city commissioner during the events on May 23, 2019, when he was arrested outside of the Southern Kentucky Performing Arts Center for public intoxication. His second arrest in about six years for incidents involving alcohol. On October 15th, Blankenship will meet with Nash and his attorney, Alan Simpson, to discuss a potential settlement. It will then be up to the Ethics Board to make a recommendation on how to move forward. The Ethics Board can recommend a reprimand, monetary fine, or removal from office, which would require a vote by City Commission. Breaking news just into the WNKY newsroom this morning. Kentucky State Police has confirmed that a collision in Hart County has left one person dead and multiple others injured. The wreck happened near the 68 mile marker on I-65 South. According to Trooper Jeremy Hodges, the fatal wreck involved a passenger car and charter bus. At this time, a detour has been established at exit 71 southbound as crews are on the scene now. WNKY's Matthew White is also at the scene now, and we will continue to update you on air and online at WNKY.com as we learn more. Switching gears a bit now, day after day we report on a lot of bad news, but this morning we're bringing you a redemption story about a homeless man who is now nearly six years sober and beginning a stable career. James Macy Flippin was a football player in high school in Monroe County, but drugs sent him to a place he says he never wants to be again. WNKY's Krista Garrison reports. That was Krista Garrison reporting. Flippin says he is thankful for every person who helped him along his journey of redemption and has a goal of becoming a minister someday. Well, the city of Bowling Green will officially open its first public driving range next week. The driving range is located at the Riverview Golf Course. According to city officials, the range will open a week from today on Tuesday, October 15th. The driving range is part of a $725,000 renovation project project at the course. Last March, city officials voted in favor of spending the money to add the range and redesign the course by making it shorter with brand new putting greens. The course should reopen in the next few weeks as well. City officials believe the range should generate $150,000 in revenue every year. As the city of Bowling Green continues to expand, you might have noticed an increase in traffic. Well, the city's Public Works Department has taken action to help alleviate some of those daily traffic woes. Earlier this spring, the city installed traffic cameras at 11 different intersections in Bowling Green. The primary purpose of these small cameras is to help make real-time adjustments to traffic patterns and help create better traffic flow during the busiest times of the day. Operators monitor the cameras from their computer at the Public Works building and and each camera gives a four-directional view of the intersection. Public Works Director Greg Meredith says that so far these cameras have really helped improve traffic flow in the city. Meredith also said that these traffic cameras don't record anything and are not being used for traffic infractions, but solely for traffic information. Contract talks aimed at ending a 21-day strike by the United Auto Workers against General Motors have taken a turn for the worse. Negotiations hit a big snag over product commitments for U.S. factories, a union official wrote in an email to members. The letter from the UAW vice president cast doubt on whether there will be a quick settlement in the contract dispute. Currently, 49,000 workers are on strike for fair wages, including nearly 900 here in Bowling Green. In a statement, GM said it continues to negotiate in good faith, quote, with very good proposals that benefit employees today and builds a stronger future for all of us. Workers have been on strike since September 16th and are now going on their fourth week without work. We begin with a WNKY special report. 
Poverty and crime can directly and indirectly affect each other, but the correlation between the two are not necessarily a cause and effect. In some instances, for example, poverty can lead people to break the law, and in others, having a criminal record can make obtaining a job more difficult. WNKY's Krista Garrison reports. The connection between poverty and crime is a complicated one, but many jails, officials, and community members are working to stop both problems and lend a hand to those who are in need. Our top story this morning, the House of Representatives made it official last night, formally impeaching President Donald Trump after a full day of debates. But this morning, there are questions about whether his trial may be delayed. Tracy Potts is on Capitol Hill, where history continues to unfold today. Thanks, Tracy. So the question remains, what's next? As Tracy just mentioned, the Senate will hold a trial to determine if Trump will be removed from office. But in the Republican-controlled Senate, removing the president is unlikely. A two-thirds majority is needed to do that, which means only 34 Republicans will have to vote against the articles for Trump to stay in office. Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell is expected to announce an exact date for this later this week. In other news this morning, Warren County Sheriff's deputies are investigating a shooting that occurred on Saturday morning where they say a man was shot multiple times. Deputies say the shooting took place before 6 a.m. in the 1600 block of Morgantown Road. The victim, 24-year-old Raymond Green, showed up to the medical center with several gunshot wounds and was later airlifted to Vanderbilt University Medical Center for further treatment. His condition is unknown at this time. During their investigation, authorities arrested 20-year-old Deontay Dowlin at the scene on unrelated drug charges. If you have any information on the shooting, you're asked to contact the Warren County Sheriff's Office at 270-842-1633. Signature Healthcare in Bowling Green is witnessing the therapeutic benefits of having a dog inside their facility, just days after adopting him from the Bowling Green Warren County Humane Society. Signature Healthcare is a local nursing home facility that offers long and short-term nursing care and rehabilitation therapy. And on Wednesday, they adopted Buddy, who you may recognize from our Pet of the Day segment. Buddy, who suffers from separation anxiety, joins the Signature Healthcare family to bring comfort to the residents. Quality of Life Director Sue Shepard says residents with disabilities, anxiety, depression, or loneliness are given an escape through Buddy. In the short time Buddy has been with Signature Healthcare, his presence has provided a variety of health benefits. Happening around the bluegrass today, the Louisville Zoo will be closed for the second consecutive day today following the discovery of a huge sinkhole on the property. Zoo employees were doing their normal walkthrough around 8.30 Wednesday morning when they saw this, a sinkhole about 50 yards wide, 85 yards long. To put that in perspective, it's almost the size of a football field and in some places possibly 50 feet deep. No damage or injuries were reported because of the sinkhole. Officials are still monitoring it to see if it grows. Louisville's Mega Cavern, which is located under the zoo, is also off limits for now. No timetable has been announced on when the zoo could reopen. We begin this morning in Glasgow, where a Smith Grove man is behind bars after police say they discovered thousands of dollars worth of marijuana in his vehicle. The traffic stop was made Saturday on Columbia Avenue. According to authorities, a bag of marijuana was found inside of the man's shirt pocket, while a larger bag containing more was discovered inside the trunk of his vehicle. Glasgow police estimate the street value in total at $6,000. The man arrested is 25-year-old Quincy Austin. Police say he admitted the marijuana belonged to him. Austin was arrested and charged with trafficking in marijuana. He is lodged at the Barron County Detention Center. Happening around the state this morning, Attorney General Andy Bashir is urging everyone in Louisville to be aware and look for the signs of human trafficking this derby season. Bashir joined Jefferson County Attorney Mike O'Connell earlier this week in Louisville with groups that assist trafficking victims. Bashir says it is no fault of the Derby, but just a fact. Human traffickers target large-scale sporting events to prey on victims and profit from the crime. Bashir also published a poster to help people identify and report human trafficking. Anyone who believes they've seen exploitation or commercial sex work are encouraged to call the National Human Trafficking Hotline at 888-373-7888 or text 233-733.